Welcome back. Now, proving who you are can be surprisingly tricky. In 2006, a terrible car crash killed one girl, Laura, and left another, Whitney, in a coma. At the hospital, they mixed up their identities, and it was only when Laura awoke from the coma, still covered in bandages, that her true identity was revealed. Today, we are embracing electronic IDs, which solves a lot of these problems. But the creation of electronic IDs requires physical presence. Or at least it normally does. Because our next speakers have developed an easy onboarding system possible from a smartphone. To tell us more about this, we have with us Jesus Alonso and Kais Dai, senior data scientists at Tree Technology. Welcome, guys. How are you? Hi. Hi. Fine, thank you. Thank Great you. to see you both. You too. So if you're both ready, take it away. We're all ears. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you all for attending our, our talk. So uh, my name is Jesus, and together with my colleague, guys, we are going to present uh, this talk on document verification. As commented, we are both uh, data scientists at Tree Technology, which is an R&D performing company for, all, for those of you who don't know us providing information and communication technology, technology solutions based on big data and artificial intelligence. We have a very strong uh, R&D department uh, in which we mainly work on uh, Horizon 2020 and in the future also Horizon Europe pro projects. We have taken part in all these projects and all these as well. And our commercial brand, which is Trilogic, is uh, involved in helping organizations in key sectors to improve their information systems and big data and information and artificial intelligence technology. And uh, you know, at the commercial side, we also have uh, projects with all these clients. So having said that, this work is, uh, has been done in the framework of the Impulse project, which is one of those H2020 uh, projects that I, shown, I showed before. The Impulse project, uh, we, we are a fairly large consortium composed of uh, public administrations, universities, uh, standardization bodies, technological centers, and so on. More concretely, we are all these uh, entities. And the, the main objective of the Impulse project is to perform a holistic and multidisciplinary evaluation of EIDs from different points of view. So from, for example, from the socioeconomic point of view, from the legal point of view, ethical, operational, et cetera. And this is not going to remain in the, just a research or theoretical, theoretical point of view, but we are also going to take it to practice by doing a five, six case studies in five different countries, providing a, a variety of, of contexts. And we'll talk a little bit more about it later. So from with all the points of view mentioned before, there's also, of course, the technological points of, point of view. And this gives us the opportunity to use disruptive technologies in this project. The two main uh, disruptive technologies that we're going to, to apply are blockchain and artificial intelligence. Blockchain, we all know it, it's a really hot topic now. It all started as a technological means to, to enable the operation of cryptocurrencies, but it's a, having a lot of different applications now. In this concrete project, we are going to apply blockchain to create a distributed ledger that is going to transform the personal data that is in our EIDs from uh, being centralized and uh, owned by governments to being decentralized and owned by citizens in, uh, themselves. And we are also going to apply smart contracts, which is another application of blockchain. Uh, concerning artificial intelligence, which is what this talk is about, we are going to perform biometric authentication and also document verification in the digital onboarding. So let's start from the beginning. What is in the first place an electronic identity or an EID? It's not so easy to define as it seems. It can be defined badly as a digital way of proving identity, which is analogous uh, to how physical ID documents are an analog way of proving identity. 
and it can have uh, different degrees of formality. It's, it isn't the same uh, like, for example, a, a team car, which is uh, in itself uh, an, an identity. You prove your identity as a customer of the gym and of the services that you can use than other type of more formal identities which are used to, for official services, for official purposes. Of course, EIDs as everything digital that we are having now have emerged under the umbrella of this digital revolution that the society is experiencing during the last decades. EIDs as an really, or as an official uh, form of proving identity are already present in many countries and online services in the world. And we normally access uh, our, our digital identity by means of uh, something physical, such as, for example, a chip, which, which is integrated into a physical card or a password, or in more recent times, maybe biometric features such as fingerprint or face recognition. But how can we create a digital identity that doesn't exist yet and uh, before we can use it? This is what the onboarding process is about. It's responsible for the creation of the digital identity. Currently, there are two main onboarding methods into, let's say, broadly digital services. One of them is the digital re registration, which is normally made using a, an email address and a password. But this uh, method is too weak for official purposes. There can be, it's not uh, exaggerated to say that a person can have uh, many different uh, accounts in, in some services using different email addresses, or they are not secure enough. And on the other hand, we have the physical onboarding, which is in itself robust and benefiting from classical security measures of IDs, and it requires going to an office and uh, facing a physical identification by, for example, a, a policeman or an, or an authority. We uh, made ourselves the question, what if we can have uh, the benefits of both of them without it uh, losing security or, or with it not being weak? And so having the benefit of uh, an EID onboarding that is easy to, to make and that not, doesn't require moving, but at the same time is robust and secure. And we came with the idea to, of a new fully automatic onboarding process, which is based on taking pictures of physical ID documents. This has several advantages. As commented, it is, it is as easy and comfortable as digital registration, and it can be done with only your smartphone. On the other side, we also have some disadvantages such, as, such that we lose the security measures that physical ID documents in itself have and that are required to move the, move the car or to see through the light, uh, through the car pointing at a light to reveal some of these elements. These elements are, for example, holograms, elements that are visible only under ultraviolet light elements with variable ink, micro sculptors, letters that move when you move the card. And the loss of these security measures makes this, in principle, this process sensitive to forgery and tampering of documents and al allowing some people with bad intentions to, uh, for example, perform identity thefts or, or spoofing. That's why we need document verification. And we're going to describe how we solve this problem. But first of all, this process has some, has some caveats that uh, we need to discuss. First of all, there is a really large variety of uh, physical ID document models. There are uh, several types of documents such as national ID cards, there are passports, there are uh, driving licenses, there are other kinds of identification such as citizen cards. And uh, inside every type of, of card, every country or every authority normally has different layouts. Even within the same country, 
there can be different layouts, different kinds of information that is uh, written on the card. And uh, this makes it uh, difficult to, to be able to validate all kinds of documents. So we both face the choice that we maybe have to select uh, the types of documents with which this system is going to work. And at the same time, we are going to make it adaptable to uh, be able to, to treat different uh, documents without making a different system for each layout. Other issue is that as the images are taken with the user's smartphones, the quality of the images is not uniform. It can be, for example, uh, dark, it can be blurry, it can have a, a different resolution, it can have a different angle, or, or it can present a shadow. And so we need to have a threshold in which we, well, what we can analyze and we, what we cannot analyze. And also, this also uh, makes us do it even more adaptable. And finally, the more difficult of all these issues is the data. Finding training data to train machine learning models for these kinds of verification is uh, really difficult. The data is extremely scarce and it's uh, hard to obtain. First of all, due to, priv due to privacy concerns and the uh, legislation, for example, the GDPR in the European Union, there is, a, of course, a, there needs to be a protection of, of personal information. And as such, a publicly available ID document images that data set does not exist. So we have to build it ourselves. How can we do it? OK, we need samples from ID documents retrieved by, by volunteers. And of course, respecting the legislation, the GDPR, and we need them to sign an informed consent in which we offer all the required security and privacy guarantees. Where, uh, this, uh, there's a, a concern in the society uh, that, uh, of giving personal information. And uh, we all have heard about news about uh, identity thefts or other kinds of crimes that were uh, committed by when someone had access to, to personal information of other people. And if we go to the case of uh, having samples of forged or tampered, tampered ID document, uh, the access to samples is uh, even more difficult. It's, uh, it's impossible without having access to a, a police or a judicial database. And for the moment, we, we, we don't have. So we also have to come with a creative solution for this extra trouble. We are probably not going to be able to train binary classification models having samples, having enough samples, both of genuine and of forged ID documents. So we need to come as, as commented with a creative solution for that. So we have built a, a data set. How have we built it? Well, we, we did it in three stages. Mm. The first stage was a data set of only uh, Spanish national ID documents, passports, and driving licenses that was provided by volunteers from our company. Uh, I thank you all. I thank all the ones who contributed to this because it was the first step and uh, it allowed us to get to work and to start uh, doing things as soon as possible. For the second stage, we retrieved a data set of ID documents from the five countries where the case studies of, of these are going to be conducted, which are Spain, Italy, Bulgaria, Iceland, and Denmark, and were provided by volunteers who work for the, for the entities, for the organizations that are members of the consortium of the project. And finally, for the first, for the last stage, we are going to retrieve a data set also of, of ID documents from the same five countries, but they are going to be provided by volunteers that participate in this pilot, in these case studies. There's going to, there's going to be two rounds of, this, of these case studies, of these pilots, and, uh, and we are going to, to offer the volunteers of the first round of pilots to provide us with a little more of, of data. As for the fourth ID documents, 
we needed to make something. So we decided to design and develop a simulator that uh, tries to, to, to modify some ID documents to present the characteristics that forged ID documents have and that will allow us to, to perform some kind of machine learning or classification models to distinguish between both. It, it is as, as accurate as, as, as we can. We have studied how forged and tampered ID documents uh, are normally are, and we have applied the, that knowledge to our, to our simulator. So what do we have to do when doing document verification? We need to take into account two assessments. First assessment is that the user that sends us a, her or his picture, a picture of, of, of the ID document, must be the same person whose information appears uh, at the document. So that to avoid uh, spoofing. Um, and the second assessment is that the ID document image must not correspond to a forged document, must be a genuine document. How are we going to do it? So now my colleague Kais is going to delve deeper into the technical aspects of the solution that we have designed. Hi everyone, uh, thank you Jesus uh, for the presentation, for the introduction and uh, let's move on to the, um, to the technical part. Next slide please uh, Jesus. Well, uh, I'll briefly present some uh, basic uh, concepts of uh, a digital image processing or uh, image uh, recognition. Um, one of them is uh, uh, key points, what we call key points and their corresponding descriptors. In each, uh, from each digital image, we can uh, get uh, uh, key points and uh, features of these key points. Features, I mean, the coordinates uh, of each key point uh, within the image, their size, uh, the uh, color transitions and so on. So uh, the key points and descriptors allow to characterize uh, uh, a digital image um, and more precisely content of this uh, digital image. And uh, one, in my opinion, one of the um, most relevant techniques to get the key points and descriptors is the scale, uh, fast, um, uh, scale invariant fast transform. Uh, so um, it, it's invariant to uh, orientation. So if we move to the next uh, slide, one of the applications uh, of getting or, or the direct use, one of the direct use of uh, uh, key points is um, finding matches between uh, two images and look uh, for um, similar uh, key points within the same image. In the context of ID document verification and the impulse um, uh, solution, um, we first start by pre-processing an image. So we have a reference image uh, uh, at the left and um, by getting the image uh, from the user during the onboarding uh, process, what we do first is to uh, find matching between the key points using, for example, k nearest neighbors uh, as a technique to, to find matches and then uh, to, um, to perform a, a, a perspective transform. This allows us to first crop the image so uh, we discard all in use, uh, useful uh, information and then put it uh, uh, in the right uh, orientation. So the question is, uh, we want to, to answer is to figure out uh, if uh, um, uh, an ID card or a passport or driving license is forged or not. So um, let's imagine two uh, simple scenarios of uh, forgeries. The first one is a, a copy move within the same uh, image. So let's imagine um, someone who wants to change his birthday, so to, to to, um, to seem older or uh, younger, so uh, to access some services, online services. So can uh, copy um, a digit and replace uh, the, 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 uh, the birth date or uh, the validity of his uh, or her uh, identity card. This is the first, let's say, uh, um, forgery uh, technique. 
Another simple uh, technique is the imita imitation uh, forgery. So the imitation is introducing new characters or new digits to the, um, uh, the ID document. And um, the, the, our objective is try to figure out if we have one of these uh, uh, forgeries in the photography, the photographies that the user uh, is sending to us. So uh, another um, um, concept uh, we are using uh, here is the optical character recognition uh, or OCR. So uh, in order to extract text from digital image, we are using OCR techniques. Um, we are using combining uh, two techniques, one using state-of-the-art deep learning methodology to detect uh, words and then applying another technique uh, more focused on the characters to get the, 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 bound, the bounding boxes of these characters. We are using OCR um, to focus, for example, uh, on the uh, machine readable zone, the zone in red. So this code, uh, after uh, being read, uh, can be transformed into a dictionary with all the information uh, available in the ID document or in the passport. In the passport also we have the MR, MRZ. So um, what we do first is to contrast the data that we have in the front side of the document with the MRZ, MR, MRZ uh, code. So we contrast uh, both data and uh, this allow us to uh, verify our first assessment, which is to um, yeah, is to um, uh, to check if the user sending the data is the same one uh, whose information appears in the photographed ID document. And that, now let's move it move to the second assessment, which is to detect forgeries, other specific uh, type of forgeries. Uh, and coming back to the key uh, key points, we are going to focus only on key points. Uh, um, uh, in, in specific fields and, and make what we call as restrictions of uh, key points. We'll focus only on uh, key points present in the bounding boxes of um, specific, uh, the, 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 the bounding boxes, one in, 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 um, in blue color in uh, the front side. And after focusing on these, key points, what we are going to do is to, to look for similarities between these key points in order to detect copy move forgeries. So in, in this context, we can use a, a clustering technique like a, a, a DB scan, uh, which stands for density-based spatial um, uh, clustering applications with noise. So this technique allows us to detect key points, similar key points, and to uh, find copy move forgeries within the, the same uh, photography. So um, in a brief explanation of the DB scan, it has two parameters, uh, the radius, which is the epsilon. Uh, the radius um, uh, tells us if uh, a point belongs to the cluster or not. If the distance between two points is, is uh, below the epsilon, so uh, the point uh, is uh, added to the uh, current cluster. And the minimum points is uh, the second uh, parameter of DBSCAN, and it allows it allow us to uh, um, tell if um, um, a group of points is a cluster or noise. It's, if it's below uh, the mean points, then it's noise. Uh, otherwise, it's a cluster. So in, in the case, in the first uh, uh, photography, uh, after applying this, this, uh, this copy move forgery technique, we detect that uh, the uh, number eight in the, the birthday uh, is uh, copied and pasted in the validity. So uh, from the genuine image, the validity is uh, until 2025. Uh, however, in the uh, uh, forged document is until 2021. And 
uh, here we can say that we have partially um, solved the, the first, uh, uh, the second assessment uh, by combining uh, um, key points extraction, making the restriction to the to specific uh, text regions, and then applying a clustering technique like DBSCAP. The other uh, scenario is the imitation uh, forgery that we will we'll try to uh, to explain how we are detecting these uh, forgeries. So uh, we we build a data set of uh, um, a character based um, the morphology of the characters. So we are focusing on the size, um, um, the, the the line, the position, the number of characters uh, in each line, the skewness of uh, of the characters the colors, uh, the dominant one and the average one, the gaps between the characters and the alignment, um, all of these in order to detect if there is a, a, a new character introduced in the document and uh, if the size is bigger or lower than the normal size, if there is a skewness or if there is um, 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 uh, like um, the alignment is not okay. So to do so after, after building a data set, we are, um, 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 training a model uh, is a one class uh, um, uh, classification uh, for novelty detection since we are using genuine uh, documents and uh, the, 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 the model uh, allow us to, um, well, the output of this model is um, a score, a global score to say, uh, to, to, um, to give us the number of abnormal characters detected in the image and uh, uh, the abnormal are the forged documents and the regular, uh, uh, the regular uh, characters are the genuine uh, ones. So we are um, making fusion between the uh, copy move detection uh, technique and the character morphology based uh, tampering detection to um, provide a, a solution for forgery detection. And here, um, with this combination, we, we have solved the second assessment. So uh, after getting um, these two um, forgery detection, uh, we are trying to minimize the error, uh, the classification error by making a global score. And here we are, we are assigning a, a weight to each uh, technique in order to, yeah, uh, as I said, to, uh, to reduce the classification error. So here is a summary of uh, the different component of our ID documents verification module. So uh, first, uh, as an input, we have a scoring of face matching. Also the data that the user introduced, um, the name, surname, birth date and validity, etc. But also, and the most important, the image of the ID card or the passport or driving license. First of all, we do a pre-processing uh, phase or step by cropping, uh, enhancing the uh, resolution or the uh, brightness of the, uh, of the image, etc. And then applying the three uh, uh, forgery detection techniques to, to get a global score and uh, to say, okay, this uh, ID document is forged or not. If it's forged, we provide a forgery proof. Yeah. Uh, coming to the uh, more or less implementation uh, side, we are using Python and fast API. Uh, in a dockerized uh, uh, environment and then uh, uploading or pushing the uh, container uh, image to AWS uh, 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 Elastic Container Registry and uh, launching the instances uh, on Amazon EC2. Well, now coming to the uh, case studies, we are using impulse in different case studies in different countries, as Jesus said at the beginning of this presentation. And um, these use cases, for example, in the city of Reykjavik, they are using for the participatory uh, democracy portal uh, in order to allow um, um, citizens to um, initiate some uh, topics of uh, public interest and, yeah, to, uh, um, uh, to, to, to comment on different proposals and 
guide like uh, the uh, policy making in the city of Gijon uh, in Spain uh, an uh, impulse uh, solution be used to uh, um, to access to the public services uh, application and Chancha uh, uh, also um, it will be used to um, um, to make uh, or issuing complaints entirely uh, online without the, uh, the need to move to police station uh, or so on to make the, the complaints. Uh, in Denmark, uh, for the electronic access to personal information and services, um, in uh, the Union Camera, Info Camera in Italy, um, um, it will be used for the enterprise digital drawer. It's um, a completely um, uh, focused uh, on the entrepreneurs. And in Pestera, in, in, in Bulgaria, it will be used for uh, several uh, services like uh, civil registration and certification. So um, I would like to thank you all uh, for uh, attending our uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, um, ask you to uh, follow us on <laughs> our social media like uh, Impulse You on, on Twitter and LinkedIn if you have any question or query. So uh, please do not hesitate to contact us by email. We will be pleased to answer all your uh, questions. And thank you. Thank you both guys. That was, that was fascinating. Of course, here in Spain, we're, we're used to the national ID card, but where I come from in the UK, we don't even have a national ID card, let alone an electronic one. And there's a lot of resistance to, to having to, for people having to prove their identity. Anyway, uh, we do have some questions for you, so let's, let's dive into them. You've uh, touched on privacy and security concerns, which are um, obviously extremely important, the possibility of forgery and the sharing of, of, our, of our data and so on. What sort of take up are you seeing in, in countries for electronic IDs in general? Is this something that is, is going to happen sooner or later anyway? Yes, I think it's something it's going to happen sooner or later. For the moment, there are a difference, not only between among countries, but also among other types of public administrations, such as uh, municipalities, for example. And uh, there is also a variety in the use cases that we are going to study. For example, in, in the city of Reykjavik, they already have a, a big platform and, a, and, another, and other kinds of EIDs that are normally used. In, in Spain, we have a, an EID, which is a, the ele electronic a DNI, uh, which uh, is, has been circulating for, for quite uh, uh, some years now. But uh, the electronic functionalities or the use of, of these of these card as an EID is minority. In other administrations, such as for example in, in Pestera in Bulgaria, this is the first experience that they are going to have with EIDs. So there is there is a quite a variety among the administrations, but I, I think it's the future and I think that sooner or later we are going to be moving to a maybe a full EID paradigm. I'm sure you're right. So um, regarding your specific onboarding system or method here, I imagine you already did consider this, but have we looked at other biometric, for example, other biometric data or other things that we could capture with the smartphone, not necessarily with a camera, perhaps a fingerprint or a holographic image of the face, something like that that we could incorporate that might be more accurate, more unique? Yeah. Mm actually is uh, uh, using um, a personal data is very sensitive. So uh, including biometric data is, uh, we are raising the bar of using yeah. uh, personal data. Going even but, higher. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, 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 we are working on a pilot, uh, a pilot uh, uh, project. And uh, we think that the next step would be using this kind of data um, um, by uh, preserving uh, user privacy and integrity, data privacy and integrity. Okay, so we'll move to a, a couple of quick, very specific questions here. One is from Alejandro. He says, uh, hello, do you use GANs to generate the documents? No, uh, only pictures taken from smartphones. Okay. 
And one from Daniel. You, you outlined about the, the key points, and he asks if they're generated using OpenCV. Yes, right. Okay, fantastic. So we've uh, answered two, is, two questions is, quickly. Because, because it was really <laughs> short. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really specific questions, and uh, I don't know uh, if there are, well, it's a very uh, popular package used uh, in order to make uh, image processing. And uh, uh, there are plenty of uh, functionalities you can uh, take advantage of, so you do not have to reinvent the wheel. So yeah, yeah. we are using yeah. OpenCV. It's, it's a very exciting uh, project. And what I find so exciting about it is the possibility of, of a sense of ownership over the, the data. Um, so I, I'm really looking forward to it myself. Okay, We're almost out much. of time. It's been a fascinating talk. I'd like to thank you both very much indeed. And if anyone else has any more questions, please, as they said themselves, get in contact with them, use the platform, or you saw their, their contact details there at the end of their talk. So once again, Jesus, and Kais, thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you, you very for much. The invitation and have a good day.